state of Florida today I have something a different type of video for you guys today I know a bunch of you guys have been quarantined for a while um, getting stir crazy you might want to try something different you know a lot of you guys probably don't cook so another passion of mine is actually cooking cooking Jamaican food you know growing up I used to have my mom in the kitchen she showed me how to cook from a young age so I know how to cook pretty well uh, so today I'm gonna be making some traditional Jamaican curry chicken from scratch I'm gonna show you guys how to do it so when you get a when you after you watch the video you could get all your supply your not supplies all your ingredients I'll put the ingredients list in the description below and watch the video and then you could go out get all the ingredients cook surprise your girl she's like man where did you learn to cook like this I learned to cook by watching Mission Flyer, Mission Flyer Cooks. I'm gonna do a couple more uh, video series of this until everything is over, but if you guys really like the cooking videos, I'll put it in every now and then. You can put in some requests of what you want me to cook and I could also go ahead and, and do that. But as usual, guys, please subscribe below. Please like, share, and comment on all the videos. Hit the bell icon for future uploads. And when you get a chance, Go back and check out the previous vids spanning a couple of years but this one is going to be cooking with mission flyer jamaican curry chicken so i got everything from scratch i'm gonna go through everything that you know so you'll know what to do and how to do it so the first thing i do is i um i start with the with some warm water i put some dishwashing liquid and definitely, I'm gonna pour some bleach. Cause what that's gonna do is I'm working with the chicken. I'm gonna be cutting the chicken up, and you know, for salmonella, I don't want any of that stuff contaminating anything else. So I always have some nice bleach water to clean up the area as I go. So I'm gonna start out with I'm gonna start out with two whole chicken. So you could start with some people like the boneless, skinless, you could go boneless, you could go chicken breast. But traditionally in Jamaica, how we do it is yeah, you, you start with a whole chicken. I like and putting my chicken, you know, when I season it up, I like putting it in a glass bowl because the plastic ones with the curry, what's gonna happen is it's gonna stain the bowl for a little bit. Um, you could use some bleach, bleach and soap water to uh, to get it out but I usually like using a glass bowl. That way does the curry don't, don't stain up um, your bowl. And also, which if you have different like lighter counters, that's not, um, that's not like, um, what am I thinking? Granite or quartz or anything like that. If you have the formica, it is gonna, it is going to stain it with the curry. So you wanna be careful with the curry. Curry is very staining. Of that over there. So this is how I uh, address the, the chicken. Chicken is easy to me um, to cut up. First, start with a leg quarter. So you just cut that. Everything on the chicken is easy to cut up. So you got that. So that's the leg quarter right there. Come down with it. You want to hit the joint. This joint is right down there. Cut it right there. Just like that, you have a leg quarter. Do the same thing over here. I leave the skin on it. Some people, you know, you guys could take the skin off if you don't want the skin. But to me, the skin add a little bit of flavor to the chicken. But you don't have to have the skin on if you don't want. If you're being healthy, as I said, you could do any type of chicken. Boneless. Next is the wing. Again, the wing have a joint. Just reach over, you see it right there. 
this little chicken is moving around right there next one right here so I'm just cutting up into big pieces right now you can either go this way that way but I'm gonna go straight down this way and I think in Jamaica how it came about us cutting up the chicken so much smaller is because once you cut the chicken up smaller you're able to feed more people make it stretch so like this big fatty area right here that's gonna be gone cut that off that's the butt, the fowl, not the fowl, the chicken butt. Cut that off. And then these are the inside. I'm gonna clean that out. But I'm just going over getting all the big fatty areas that I don't need right now. Yeah, it's as I say, it's easy to easy to cut up chicken than people think. You know, just if you hit it at the joints. You're good to go. So just like that. Leg quarters, thigh, drumstick, wing, the breast, and the chicken back. But that's just part of it. So now we're gonna start dicing it up. And that's where like this big knife, heavy knife comes in. It's up to you how much you want to dice your chicken up. You could do it small, you could do it bigger. It all depends on what you want to do. So I'm going to cut what I'm doing right now. So I'm going to cut the chicken up. And then I'm going to clean it. And there's two ways you could clean the chicken. You could use some vinegar. But you just got to, you're just using it to wash the as we would say, I don't know how you would say it in America, we're just washing the rawness off of the chicken. Or you could use lemons. You could do the same thing to just wash, you know, wash the chicken off, wash the rawness as they call it off of the chicken. Plus it's gonna help once we clean out like the rib cage because I don't like all that junk in the rib cage. I, I wash all that and clean all of that out and then go down with it with the vinegar again right here in the joint there's a joint right here just put your knife in there cut right through do that make sure you keep your hand out of the way last thing you want to do is cut your finger off and then you have curry fingers I'm like oh man what's that part of the chicken that's my thumb You gotta be careful, don't have your board too wet because what I'll do as well, which my wife hates when I do this inside, so I'll just say I'll be splattering chicken juice everywhere. But that's why I have the bleach water to go back through and wipe down all the surfaces, especially if you see any splat, cut all, you know, wipe all those air down so you don't get salmonella all over the place. I'm gonna do them um, fairly larger size cause you get more, it's more meaty that way. And the reason I like using a whole chicken over say different parts or just one part, you kind of get a mix of all the chicken and all the different flavors. So you could know it's like, well, you know, I think this is a bread piece, breast piece. So you'll know if you wanna do the breast or you could do the thigh, you know, light white meat or dark meat. Really up to you. But traditionally, we just cut up the whole chicken. Cause usually in Jamaica, we growing up, we had some chicken. So when you kill a chicken, you just don't, you kill it and you cook the whole thing at one time. You don't really save a breast here or this. You just do the whole thing. So this is the, this is the breast area. So if you pull this rib cage at this back, off rib cage off you'll uh be this is like the chicken breast so this is very flavorful as well especially when you season it down and marinate it so usually if you want to have it soak 
true or whatever all the way. Usually, like growing up, um, my mom would season up the would season up the meat the night before. So you season up the meat the night before. You let it soak in overnight, and she would actually cook before we go get up early and cook before we go to church. So when we get home from church, Sunday dinner is already done. All you have to do is really just, you know, just warm it up and you're not slaving in the kitchen. I was growing up in a Jamaican household, sometimes you have to go to church two times on Sunday. Well, three times if you go to, <laughs> if you go to Sunday school. Me and my brothers used to get, they used to send us to Sunday school and we used to skip Sunday school and go pick mangoes with our friends. But you know how long that lasted. All the kids always get caught. You guys figure out what I'm gonna eat with the chicken yet? Nope, make some rice and peas. So the trick to this, I use the actual real, the red kidney beans. And um, I soak it, if you can, soak it from overnight in the water. That kind of help, that kind of help break it down. Not break it down, but yeah, let you cook it faster if it's been soaking in the water. So right now I had it uh, soaking. Um, I started it up, not started up. <laughs> I put it on the, on the pot, I had it covered up. Now I gotta turn it down to low, you gotta remember what I forgot was it's gonna start bubbling over and it'll boil over, so you always gotta put a vent, vent the pot a little. So I gotta put some, um, so what I like to do with this, if we have it, do we have it? Yeah. I take some green onions, garlic, and some black pepper and go ahead and season up the, um, season up the, the peas while they're cooking. So that way, they got a nice, you know, they got a nice flavor to them. I call these green onions or scallions. What I do, I use just Cut that down, cut that off. Look for the beat up or withered pieces. Cut those off. And what I do, I just, I'm not a chef or anything, so I can't cut all that stuff so fast, but. That's what I do right here. And then I just take it over to the pot. You see this little opening right here? This little opening right here? That's how you need to just take your stuff and put it in there. Especially if you have the, the uh, cutting board that have the like the ring around them to keep the stuff from rolling off the side. So that's what you have that cutting board for you to put that in there. Have some real garlic, but because it's gonna be in the rice, I'll just take some of this minced garlic, probably about a tablespoon worth. And then I always use a fork and I go ahead and I mix it all in. You could, I'm not sure if you could hear, but the, the peas aren't cooked yet because they're still kind of hard. So I kind of cook them till they're al dente because after that, al dente kind of soft because after that, then you got to put them with the rice and you don't want them to cook, uh oh, too much because then it'll, um, the peas will cook out and pop too much. So with that, this coming out with all that, you mix it up still. Now you just oh. good thing that's the fine fine pepper. Mm. 
yeah, that's the fine one. So cook that down. And then what I'll usually do as well is um, add a scotch bonnet pepper to it. So I'm gonna let that finish simmer down, well cooked down. It's all the trash. So now that I got the, the chicken done, I have it all just cleaned up, clean up the other cutting board. And now I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean up the, clean up the, clean up the chicken. So I'm gonna make sure I go to cold water, cause I was using the hot water to make sure it's cold, cause I don't want it scalding, cause then it's gonna scald the chicken before you even start cooking it. So I always use cold water. What I do, I just take the whole thing, wash it out, and I just dump it in this. And I go ahead and mix it down and so like this, like I don't like none of this stuff on mine. So I usually just clean it out. Clean out all the rib cages. It's a little extra step, but I think it's worth it. So usually just wash them down like this and then I'm gonna go through and do all the rest. And then in the interim, what you do while you have all the water to help cut some of the rawness off of the chicken. Got some regular white distilled vinegar, as I said, or you could use lemon or if you have a lemon juice. And then I just pour it in there. You could probably do like a half of a cup or a quarter of a cup, depending on how much chicken you have. And if you, you know, like if you have a chicken like this, or a whole cut of chicken, like if you have chicken breast or you have skinless, boneless thighs, I just recommend just use some lemons or just some uh, lemon water. So now I'm washing the, you know, washing all the chicken. You know, some people say you don't have to wash chicken, but I like to clean it, go through it. You know, like all this stuff, cause all this is just gonna settle down at the bottom, at the drain. But I got the mesh in there to catch all that stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and finish washing these down. I right, got the chicken clean and washed down with the vinegar. I'm gonna, since it's so much, you could, if you have a smaller amount, you could season it up in the bowl. But since it's, this is two chicken, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put it back into the sink. That way it could drain off all the excess water that's in it. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna actually season the chicken up in the sink. That way all the pieces, every piece could get some seasoning on it. So no piece don't have no seasoning on it. So all right, so it's drained down. So the way I like to use it. Okay. The way I like to season it, I have a two-step process. I use a dry rub and then I make my own fresh seasoning. Um rub that I put on it, but that's the wet one. So what I usually do for the dry one, and I don't put the curry powder on until the very end. So what I do usually is, so I have these seasoning right here. And then of course the curry powder over there. So what I got is, what I use, I use some Easy Spice, all purpose Jamaican seasoning. It all depends um, you get this off uh, Amazon. It all depends on how much uh, chicken you have, how much you use. You know, you could use it sparingly. You know, you could always add more salt. You can't take away salt. So I just usually spread it out. Depends on what you have. You may, you know, use a couple of tablespoons. You know, you like your food seasoned, so you could just coat it. So I usually just coat that that one side. Then I use just a little bit for some little bit of kick. I put some of the jerk seasoning on it, even though it's just a little bit, probably like two to three teaspoons, depends on the amount of chicken. And then I use some fresh pimento. I think you guys call this allspice. And I use some garlic. Usually, again, this depending on the amount. You know, I've been doing it for a while, so I kind of have an idea of how much I need. But you know, um, cover up the chicken, 
you could probably use about a tablespoon season it up and see how good of a coating you have of it and then I have this um, it's like an all-purpose seasoning from Goya so I just season it all up like this then I have my one little scotch bonnet it's one of the easy way out to do it without getting all the seeds in there because you know on the pepper the seeds is where I carry the heat so I just go from the top make sure you don't cut yourself you could use a smaller knife would be a lot easier again I'm all about the preservation of fingers and you just pull it out and see it comes out with all the seeds Mostly all the seeds of the, that's where a lot of your heat come from. If you want, you can scrape out the rest. What I do, I just dice that up. Again, for the spice level, you could use a half, a quarter, depends on how much of you want. And what I use is you could use any type of vegetable oil, but I like using um, olive oil. I think the olive oil, gotta find the olive oil. Use a little bit of olive oil and Probably like a teaspoon to a tablespoon to pass again, depending on your chicken. Just enough to coat it for everything to stick to it. And then, have some fresh thyme. Wash the thyme off. Fresh organic thyme. Again with this, um, you know, there's many ways to cook curry chicken. Everybody cook it differently. It's all about what you like, your taste profile, and the flavor that you want. But this way, the way I'm, the way I'm cooking it now, this will be delicious. They probably request you to come and cook for them all the time. So what I do, I just take my hand, you could use a spoon you could use you could put a plastic glove on I usually use a spoon or a glove once I put the curry in because once you do it with the curry your hand is gonna be stained for days so what I do now is I go ahead and I mix this all up by hand get the pieces out of there Out the thing, them. Let's see it. Now you can smell all the seasoning and the flavors already soaking in. I'm gonna make my wet seasoning. Again, this is the bleach water. Kill all that salmonella. Always use paper towel. Cause you don't wanna use a use a um a rag because you know it's gonna just hold the the salmonella or whatever in it. So if you get a paper towel every time you go, you just got a fresh paper towel so you know you're wiping your hands off with something clean. So what I'm gonna do is I usually use my little ninja and what I do is I take some green onions or scallion yeah. these down. again I usually cut all the, the ends off of them 
And then I go through my sweater and I cut those ends off. Pull that one off. Cut that off. And then with this, I don't have to cut it up too much. That's what the ninja gonna do. Let's take this, take that, take that. them up like so I put that in there I got my garlic cloves let's cut a little so I'm gonna probably put a uh, in this one, I'll put four. Always cut the little end off. That's two. Anybody keeping count? Always make sure the blade is down. Last thing you're gonna do again, cut off yarn. Got the rice over, the peas over there bubbling down. So I'll take that. It'll take some time. And with this, I'm gonna use a smaller onion because the onion is already strong and if anyways any way you want to learn how to cut an onion without crying is you could soak it in some water or you could cut it under some running water to help keep down whatever go in there to make you cry because you know bad man to cry they don't gotta be small that's big show it in this uh, And this thing is gonna be good. You can smell it. And I take some of my little pimento. And one more thing. These are my scotch bonnet that was in the I got from my cousin. Fresh from the tree. So what I do I usually just take one. I keep them frozen. Because if not, they wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't last, but they still have their potency and I take one drop in there put a little bit of oil a little bit more put about halfway up of water up enough that's enough I'm gonna open this gonna be full of nothing but Ooh, smells good so what I do I just take it now pour it over the whole chicken and 
know what I'm saying? This is my way of doing it to make it real flavorful. You take all of it now. Usually when I do it for the, uh, for when I make my jerk season, I make it different, you know, put some browning and stuff in it so it looks so the, so the seasonings are already brown. But because, you know, we're gonna do the, um, the curry, this already have a close resemblance to the curry. So I got that done there. Have it a simmer. Always wash these out right away because if not, when you make it a smoothie and you drink it, it's gonna always smell like the onions. So now, see the rice, not the rice, the peas bubbling over. I always put my lid upside down so I'm not putting the inside of the lid. Okay, all right, so looking good. The peas, some of the peas start to split. So I do, I take one and I squeeze it. So that got the good consistency. So I'm gonna turn the stove down. I think I have some coconut milk in here. Some coconut milk from before I was frozen. So I'm just turn the fire back up so it could melt it so got the coconut milk in there so what I'm gonna do now is um I'm gonna add the rice but before I add the rice I have one of my frozen whole scotch bonnet just drop it in there and then I got that I'm gonna take about a quarter stick of butter I already cut some off of this so it may look bigger but some was already cut off and I put it in there and I melt it down because that's what's gonna do is help keep the rice nice and shelly because I don't like the rice it's not you know it's not sticky it's not supposed to be sticky it's supposed to be nice and shelly and what I'm gonna teach you guys I'm gonna teach you guys a, a, a trick a secret how to cook your rice and get nice shelly rice it's going to be in the oven so make sure her pot you have don't have any rubber handles so I got these emerald pot they got the uh, the metal handles so those could go into the um, oven no problem so I got the rice scotch bonnet I'm gonna take oh it's another piece of a little bit of time wash them off Throw it in the iPod. Make it help as well. What it'll do? Nice flavor. It's a secret, my mom. Not everybody do this. You don't have to do this. If you have any brown sugar or anything like that, you can put it. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take one tablespoon. White sugar. That's kicking it up a notch. So turn it down. So usually I don't, you know, measure. I kind of know what to do because I don't measure the peas because it all depends on how much peas you have left or whatever. I usually get the Uncle Ben's rice, but through the current situation, you can't find any rice. So I just found some of the Publix brand rice. So what I usually do, I just, for the ratio, I just keep pouring it in all the way around and I'll see okay I could see the rice barely see some peas mix it up remember the rice gonna come out and get fluffy but right now it looked like there's more peas 
than rice gonna be. So I'll put a little bit more. And I said this is a touch. If you have to measure everything out, you could measure everything out. So I have that right like that. I'm gonna turn the stove off. Get me some Reynolds wrap. Already got the oven warming up to 350. The reason I'm doing this, I don't have a metal lid, so I don't know. I don't know if it's plastic. That's not plastic, but I don't know if that's oven safe glass. So what I do, I take that. And this way you don't get any burns on the end. So I take this. And I put it in the oven. So what I always do when I get the pot out, no matter, I know it's clean, I always just do a once over with some water and stuff. Just make sure I know everything is good. Then I'm gonna wipe this out because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some oil. Actually, no, I don't have to wipe it out. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put it on the stove and I'm gonna turn on the pot. Make the pot warm up and dry out the water. Cause if you don't dry the water, you put the oil in there, it's gonna be popping. So while I'm doing that, I'm gonna do this. So I use, my mom usually get me this. So this is all I have left. So I don't know if that's gonna be enough. So I picked up some, um, Badia curry powder, Jamaican style. Um, they got good reviews on it. I never really used it, but I usually use a Blue Mountain. My mom usually bring it or send it from uh, New York for me. So now I'm gonna go ahead. But this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a wooden spoon because with the curry, I don't want my hand smelling and looking like curry for days. So I'm gonna do, I take this, and I'm gonna just sprinkle it all in there. So again, it, you just wanna give a nice, even coat. So I do that on the one side, and I'm gonna mix up everything. Man, it smells so good. everything so it's up to you know you like a lot some people depends on I like my curry to look like curry so I was looking at this now I don't know how it look through the camera it don't look curry enough for me I'm gonna pour more curry in there So everybody does it different. It's just the way that I do it. I love it this way and the food tastes good. And if you're cooking for a lot, just use the, a lot of people, just use the sink, but just me and the fam. So this will last us for a couple of days. Depends if anybody nearby, if you want some, make me know. Yeah, start looking proper. So it don't even look like, uh, I wanted to try the Badia still, but maybe next time. You got a good, put a little more. You got a good curry look to it when we want. Actually, I'm gonna just finish this in here. Mom, I need some more. Whenever the Rona stuff over. to see if I could get some uh, see if I could find it online you can find anything on Amazon these days so look at that that look real good so wash my hand off again in the bleach water I 
new this and wipe right down so I could smell the pot getting warm. So what I'm gonna do now is actually I'm gonna do this while I make a mess. And it's one thing, well this is dark so you won't see it. So on the light account, as I say, if you drop that on there, it's gonna stain it. So I'm gonna open up the body of curry. Pretty good. It almost what you smell. It smell like the almost smell like the chief curry. The Trini curry, the chief, pretty strong curry. I like cooking with the chief curry too. That got a lot of grain. So now that the pot warm, what I'm gonna do is take some of this. Olive oil, you could use vegetable oil. I like the olive oil, give it a little better taste and just coat the bottom with it. All right, so the pot ready. What I usually like to do, you could season them, give it a little bit more curry flavor and everything. Sprinkle a little and just fry some of the curry itself right in the bottom of the, of the pot. And just mix it up. You hear that? So that is high, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn it down. And I'm gonna grab some of the uh, the chicken. Need a bigger spoon. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this now and drop it in there. down the chicken mm -hmm. I like doing that in the almost like you're frying it but you're not So I turned the stove down because you know the pot was hot and the oil was hot so you don't want it to try and burn it so now I'm going to turn the stove back up now that I got it. So all that down there is nothing but flavor. Man, smells good. The bottom ain't, you know, it ain't on the bottom, it ain't burning. I'm trying to keep my fingers clean here for a little bit, but I'm gonna have to pick up the rest of it. So 
And I was cooking now and got the juices going. Turn it back up some. See, the good thing if you had put it in the bowl, then you have all of this now in the uh, in the bowl to save for you to pour in the pot. So what we're going to do now, get that one per minute. Get some water. We're going to pour some water in there. But that amount of water depends, you know, um, how you're cooking. If you're gonna cook down, I'd say use about two to three cups of water. Or what you could do to, depends on how you season it, if you want it to have a little bit more flavor, you could use chicken stock. That's just a top tip. Cut the curry chicken down on low. Simmering, say the scotch bonnet. See, the scotch bonnet just in there for flavor. Looking good. Now I'm gonna check on the rice. And my little mittens. Cool them on easy mittens. It's like it was hot. This off. Okay, okay, all right. I see ya. Always use a fork, always use a, don't use a spoon. Do you mix up too much stuff? this. Ah, uh, yes, you see that? Looks nice. Just mixed up, look nice and fluffy. And just, you just, just mix it up, so mixed up. Mix up. See how fluffy it look? All right, peeps. See it there? Food done. Delicious. Eat them that you know it tastes still. Mm-hmm. Irish potato. Good flavor. Rice and peas. Nice, I'll show you. But yeah, definitely give this a try. Tell me what you think. Tell me what the next thing you guys wanna see me cook. And as usual, if this is your first time checking out the channel, please subscribe, like, share. Um, go back and watch my previous vids. Hit the bell icon for future uploads. And let me know what you guys are gonna be cooking today. Rice time, please. My mom will be disappointed because I don't have no vegetables. But I always say, bad man don't eat vegetables. Thanks for watching. Again, please like, share, subscribe. New merch coming soon. Peace.